Have you ever wondered if Leica is really worth it? Well, you're not the only one and in this episode I'm going to share with you three reasons why I think Leica is worth it and three reasons why I think you should maybe reconsider or why Leica might not be worth it. So let's go. So here's reason number one why I think Leica is definitely worth it. It's the quality and the design. Yes, within Leica you will see whether you have the cheaper X2 here, which is an APS-C camera from 2012, or you have the Q1 here, which you see, which is from 2015. Both of these cameras have one thing in common. They've been designed with great care, great consideration, and top finished materials. And the differences here are somewhat minute, but they make a difference. First of all, it's the buttons. If you look at a button on a Leica camera, hey, it's a it's a button, like a, like a shutter button, for instance. But if I feel, for instance, if I compare it to my Fuji cameras, those buttons are great, but these are extraordinary. There's a right amount of tension on the actual springs. It's nice and robust. If you touch them by accident, they won't just move. It's a very simple thing, but it's just, you know, the devil is in, in, in the details here. If you, for instance, look at this cap here, if you're an Fujifilm X user, you know you can barely align those straight. There always is a bit of slack on it. Within Leica, there isn't. It perfectly aligns. So those are the small things where I think, oh, Leica, you've done a great job. Then there's the Leica menus. Those are extremely simple and basic, but they cover everything you want to have as a photographer. And one other thing is, that Leica cameras, in my opinion, are built to last a long time. Yes, you'll be paying for it, but you get a camera which definitely you can go on for, for many a year. So that's definitely a big benefit. Then there's number two, uh, two, sorry. <laughs> the shooting, that was so lame. The shooting experience with Leica, because it is so, so simple, you don't have as many distractions as you might have with other cameras. And this is strange because with my Fuji films or my Sony's or my Ricoh's, I really never felt it. But now I really feel like, hmm, there's not that much to customize on. You can choose between a few things. And then from there on, you can pretty much take it forward. It's also very intuitive. So you don't have to be a seasoned professional to understand the menus. If you go into a Sony menu, I challenge you to understand it. Fujifilm in that way is already far more simplified and Rico, well, that's kind of in the middle of those two. But Leica is very simple, very basic. Uh, you have five tabs or maybe in the later cameras you have a few more, but not like in Sony 15 tabs alone for videography, for instance. So that's something that really is fantastic. It takes away a lot of the clutter. You easily can basically control this camera and you get great results. Reason number three is the image quality. Yes, you've heard a lot about this. Leica is uh, well known for its image quality, but I wouldn't like to play down any of the other cameras. However, where Leica sets itself apart are the following things. First, first of all, the sharpness wide open. I'm always pretty much surprised, especially with the Q and also with the X2 here. Uh, the Q and the X2, they basically wide open provide great image quality. It's not only sharpness in the center, but you see little to no distortion. There's no moiré. It really is, you know, you can feel like I put a lot of attention in actually creating those lenses and they're known for it. So they don't disappoint it. They actually deliver. What more do you want? Then there is the management of the shadows and highlights. And I really noticed this shooting in bright daylight, which I tend to do. Um, and I was really surprised how easily you can manage the uh, shadows and highlights. Yeah, you just have to push one or two buttons. Here you go into your settings, down, you up and down the contrast a bit, and you see that your highlights are very well managed. If you go into RAW or DNG, as they call it within like other files, it's very easy to manage. So that, that takes away a lot of time and a lot of frustration in some cases, especially with Fujifilm when you have certain recipes, it can take you quite a bit of time before you've got it fine-tuned. You don't have that within Leica. So I think those are the things that you really want to buy a camera. It's a great build design, it's simple to operate, and it renders great results. Now that said, it doesn't mean <laughs> that everything is okay with Leica. No, we're gonna go now into the second part, which is the part where Leica might not deliver or you might want to reconsider.
So three reasons why Leica might not be worth it or why you want to reconsider. Now, the first one is obviously the elephant in the room. It's the price. Leica cameras are freakishly expensive if you have to believe everybody. Well, in reality, that might not be the case. Leica has a different type of cameras. Obviously, the most expensive ones are the M series. Yeah, the latest M11 comes in, I think, about $10,000 or something. It's really expensive, so it's not for everybody. And even if you go down to the M6s, you'll still pay a couple of thousand dollars. But you also have the Leica TL and CL cameras, and those are basically interchangeable lens cameras uh, who uh, share the L mount with Panasonic full frames and the Sigma cameras. So instead of buying native glass, which I normally like to do, hey, if you buy those cameras, they're very affordable um, and you can get some great lenses there. Now, if we look at Leica lenses themselves, yeah, they do tend to cost a bit of money. And that's also one of the things why it might not be for you, because in Leica, everything costs money. If I have the Q here, yeah, there is, this is a fixed lens camera, so this is a slightly different thing, but still the price, according to a lot of you, is extremely high. And I'd like to argue it. If you look at the price here, you buy this for two and a half to three thousand. The Q2 is indeed between five thousand and six thousand new and used. You still be paying four to four and a half thousand. Those cameras are very expensive. But if you look, for instance, at the Sony RX1 Mark II, one of their only few fixed lens cameras they've actually made, even almost a decade later, they, they still go for two and a half thousand to three thousand euros, depending on if you can get a copy. So I'd argue that, yes, the cameras are quite expensive. And I'd also say that's a negative because here's the thing. There's so many alternatives for that money or, or cheaper. Yeah, so you don't always have to have a Leica to be a great photographer. I'd actually argue with or without Leica, it doesn't matter that much. One of the other things is accessories. And that's where Leica is quite expensive. If you want to buy a thumb rest, boom, 180 euros. You want to buy a cage, boom, 150, 200 euros. You want to buy one of these nice little straps, which I have here for my uh, little X2, bomb, 180, 200 euros. You want to buy uh, a little case surrounding this, boom, starting at 250, going up to two and a half thousand euros. I kid you not. So Leica in that way is very expensive, both in startup prices and in accessories. Another downside, so this is downside number two, is actually Leica, I find them great because they're photography centric. But nowadays, a lot of people are looking, photographers or videographers, for hybrid cameras. Leica doesn't really cater for that kind of camera. Sure, you have some uh, video capabilities, but if you're a videographer, yeah, I've never heard a vi videographer state, oh, I need a Leica. Maybe you have. Leave a comment below if you agree or disagree on this one, because this is purely my opinion. Yeah, and there's also, of course, the availability. And that's also one thing of Leica lenses. They're not always available. So you sometimes pay a lot of money, and I'm really talking thousands of dollars, for a lens that you might get in a, in a year's time if you're unlucky, or you simply can't get it at all. So that's also one of the downsides. And I think if you look at Fuji, Sony, Nikon, Canon, you name them, lenses, plenty. Never a bother there. So that's also something you should take into account. You know, and then there's the customization options here in Leica. I personally think, my experience, I like it because it's a very plain shooting experience. But, after, you know, at times I do notice like, oh, I wish I had my Ricoh or my Fuji with me because then I can at least, you know, adjust the contrast, the highlights, uh, deep blues, whatever there is. You can really customize it, focus uh, settings. You can customize it all to a T. Unfortunately, in Leica, that's not the case. And again, Leica is really photographic centric, but I would love to see him having a little bit more customizations op options. And specifically what I miss is a tilt up screen here. It, oh, I mean, I don't have one on, on my Ricoh, so I like the point and shooties. This is a point and shooty as well, the X2. And this is a point and shooty. If you really look at it, you know, va bang. But I'd really like a tilting screen upwards, not side. No, 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 that's for videographers. So from my point of view, that's like an essential kind of missing. And I'd like to see Leica implement that at some stage. But Nowadays, built-in ND filters go, go a long way. I would love to see that. So all in all, I'd say Leica, I love the shooting experience with them. I love the image quality. I love the simplicity. But there's also a few things I really miss in it. So I hope you found this interesting and see you next time.
拜。